So the you know the total mm -hmm. pricing would be fifty nine thousand dollars. Okay. Questions from the board. I'm sorry. You said fifty. Fifty nine. Fifty nine thousand. Okay. So, do I have a motion from the board to move forward? With appointing the auditor for the 630-18 audit. So, just let me be clear about wh where we are in the course of the contract. It is a so it's multi-year. It's a multi-year. Mm -hmm. It was um, definitely for the for the first three years, and so 630-18 would be year two, okay. and then we have an option <coughs> to renew it for an additional two years. So the total is for five years at the okay. max, and then we would do an addition. We would do an R another RFP. Okay. So I think I had asked this question once before, but is there rotation of partners, with, you know, working on the on so, our accounts? Um, the uh, we have had um, the same partner assigned to us, Scott Bassett. He was yes, he was here. Presentation. Um, it's the 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 staff that actually does the audit work that is is different. So for um, six thirty seventeen, the um, the audit manager was Lauren Davis, and she was present with um, Mr. Bassett at the mm -hmm. meeting last month. And then um, the um, the audit associates that um, you know you know really dig into you know the, the details, if you will. That's where you know there's always rotation. Um, I typically don't see someone you know, someone come back a, a second mm -hmm. a second time. So you haven't seen a, the lead auditor change, really. It's, it's the staff that you think it's exactly is changing. Yes. Okay. Yes. Yeah. I mean, there's so much discussion on this topic of you know ro rotating <clears throat> and what's appropriate and how frequently to change auditors and so forth. And there's just differing opinions on it. It's mm -hmm. not entirely clear what's best to do. Is that contract available for board members to see? I mean, to have it. I think that's something. It would be. Oh, a know, copy of the yes. RFP, or do you want? No, a copy, copy of the actual contract that oh, you the have. Engagement. Yeah. Oh, I think that's probably so something that the, Bill yeah, should have if he doesn't already have it and share it with the rest of us. Because when I saw that item, it was just like, well, what's the contract? How much does it cost? Where are we at with a contract? Are we in a renewal, or we, is it a new contract? So I guess two things. One would be, what is your satisfaction generally with this company, RSM? And then I guess I'd ask them of my fellow board members, how do they feel about them as well? Um, you know, I mean, I think they've, they've done a good job. Um, when I have questions, you know, you know I'll, during the course of the year, I you know, can email them and you know, they respond to me very, you know, very promptly. And, you know they're they're good to work with. Okay. And you feel as though they make suggestions that are manageable, doable. It's, um, I mean, we've had our our management letters back and forth. Do mm -hmm. you feel those are helpful documents yeah. to you? Um, well, so like for example, um, one of the comments that doesn't ever go away is the um, you know uh, accounting policy manual. And yes, I you know do have several that are written um, and I did actually um, after you know everything was done all said and done I did contact the um, set up an, um, a telephone call with the um, audit manager because I said look um, although Mr. Bassett appeared at the meeting and said he would defer really doing some nuts and bolts on it until you know such time that we do get a new accounting software program especially if we're um, working towards doing it within the next year, but I did say to her, you know, I do have several policies that are already done. I'd really like to, if possible, find a way to make, you know, make the comment go away at 6:30:18. So, when they come out and do um, the preliminary field work, which is, you know, we're looking to have that done sometime next month. Um, at this point. Um, uh, we're going to sit down. She's going to look at what I have, and then while we did speak, she did mention um, a couple of policies that she would like to have. Um, one being for the pension fund, and the other one um, was for our capital assets. So those two I'll work on so that when they come back out, I um, uh, we are scheduled for them to come back out in October to do the final field work. Um, work at getting those in place by that time. So you know. Hopefully, um, we'll be able to make you know make that co 
comment go away. Okay. Um, you know, I was a little frustrated um, with the one on the performance bond fund. Several years back, they had made a comment they wanted us to bring the fund online, which which I did, and it was really um, like for the cash bonds that we received. Mm -hmm. And like now, they said, you know, they want me to put all the um, pass books that we're holding um, on, you know, as part of the fund. So it's like. Okay, I'll just, you know, I'll set up the accounts that I need so that I can get that accomplished. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, it's not, you know, it, it, like I said, it was a little frustrating. I would have preferred to have it done at the same time, but, you know, mm -hmm. just, you know, manage, manage through that one. Okay. Um, so. My, I mean, I'm new to this mm -hmm. job and to, um, to their auditing reports, but my only criticism this this go round um, was I saw the last ones back in December, but is this that it would have been nice to have the report to the board prior to our meeting and prior to that presentation because it, it um, we had the other documents and it's I just think that that it's a lot to digest, but oh, more the report to the board yes finance. the actual yeah. management letters exchange because that's the guts of our concern. I mean, obviously yeah. the rest of it is as well, right, but that is, that is, you know, right. that's that's the, the sort of heartbeat of everything, right. sure. you know, auditing-wise yeah. from my perspective, so um, sitting here. So it would have been really nice to have that. So that would be my request. And and I don't mind, you know, there being more questions. That's why I did ask that last, last uh, uh, meeting. Um, after we've digested, we should have the ability to have that conversation with um, you know the lead auditor or whoever else he assigns. You know if we have additional questions because there was no time to. You can't just be reading that while you're here. So I did have I did have a concern with the answer that you received when you asked that question, and okay. that was to uh, run the questions through Anna and Bill. So sometimes I think if you're trying to get information on a specific question right. and it's going through two or three different people. I think you would want the opportunity to direct to more, to more direct mm -hmm. direct contact because if can, yeah, yeah that's a thought yeah so I, I did think about that later and thinking that's a little cumbersome like I have to ask permission to ask the question right but and there's not enough time yeah. during that presentation to really digest no, everything so there's going to be questions following up yeah mm -hmm. so does the forty seven thousand dollars cover a follow up meeting. Or, like Ann said, can we get, I mean, I, I think it's helpful yeah. for them to walk through the numbers mm -hmm. because just going through the numbers on yeah, our own. Yeah, that actually was helpful. Right. That, it, for me, that was definitely helpful because in then reading more of it in depth, then, you know, you, you have that information and you can, high, you know, the highlighting was very helpful. But in the reverse, just having that sort of, with respect to the report to the board, that I would have wanted to see. Uh, Directly, especially if you had some of those concerns that you've just mentioned too. So, uh, but maybe, yeah, what's in that fifty-nine thousand dollars in terms of communication ability? Maybe we should up that ante a little bit. You know, not feel excellent point, not, and not feel that it has mm -hmm. to be. This was a thought I've had previously. Maybe not a one-time, once-a-year presentation, but that there might be a mid-year presentation of some kind. You know, where the, you know questions could be asked. It could be brief, keep to a time limit, whatever. But. So what I can do on that is um, when they come out and do the preliminary work, I can pose that question. So what you're looking for is the possibility of the auditor coming out for more than one meeting during the year. Yeah, because things will, will inevitably come up, and we seem to have this expanded now um, uh, task list, if you will, you know, which may, you know, and which auditing may impact and vice versa. So I, you know, I think like, you know, I feel like that would be, we need them as a resource more than just that here it is, you know, here's right. the numbers, goodbye. So I think what you're saying, I heard you say, Anna, we'd like you to ask the auditor to provide the, the Board of Finance package before the meeting so that we can look at that. Oh, and you you're talking about the report to the board of finance. Yeah. yeah so if we can have that before the meeting so that we can look at it and be prepared to ask questions. And I think what I'm hearing you guys say, and I'm in agreement with, is we'd like you to ask Scott to be prepared to come to a follow-up meeting after we receive the audit. I mean, it's helpful that he goes through things, but we, there's no time to prepare any kind of questions, and by the time we've digested it, it's a lot. the show's over. It, it's really a lot. So we, we'd like him to give us a little more. <coughs> 
and we'd like to hear his response to those requests. Thank you. So back to our motion. Well, before the motion, I think Ann wanted some input from the rest of the board members with regard to the selection of the auditor. So I was involved when mm -hmm. Anna sent out the RFP for okay. auditors. Anna, correct me if I'm wrong, but you received two responses. So both firms were very impressive. I mean, these guys are sharp. Yeah, I mean, I mean big company. So I think we yeah. deferred to Anna to select one that she felt most comfortable working with, mm -hmm. you know, and the pricing was actually a little bit higher for this group, but our former chairman, Steve Harney, was able to get them to lower the price a little bit to match what the other hmm. auditor had offered, oh. correct? Is that pretty much my memory, correct? Um, well, I, I um, tried to leave the decision, you know, between the, the, the board members, and, you know, I, I feel that it was really a concurrence of the board members that you know, they felt comfortable staying with RSM rather than changing firms at that time. And I did. I did. Yeah. They were both That's super. Fine. But yeah. but just to show, I mean, you, you, you send out this RFP and for two yeah. audit firms yeah. to respond is, mm -hmm. there's not a lot of audit firms out there for, willing yeah. to take on a, such a small municipality. Yeah. That That's would be fine. my feeling. Yeah. So as long as they're rotating. And I think, and I think some of like the like smaller firms, they're not geared up to do a municipality our size. So it's you know it's it's, it's mm -hmm. striking yeah. that it's striking that balance. Yeah. yeah, good point. Good point. John, do you have an opinion on the auditor? No, I agree with him. Okay. That's it. Okay. I do too. Good point. Okay. Thanks, Sam. Any other comments? Okay, so are we ready for a motion? And the motion would be to approve. Oh, I'm sorry, Go ahead. One, one more question. So this whole idea, so an engagement letter will be signed by you and Mark? No, the engagement Ooh. letter will be signed by the, the chair, the chair. Which is Bill mm -hmm. Weber. Yeah, mm -hmm. I didn't remember doing that last year. When, what's, what's the time frame of that? I'm trying to think. Um, what is that? Sometimes some that they decide to come here. Quickly here. Yeah. So for six thirty-seven seventeen. Um, so what? So you're asking us to approve this appointment of the auditor this evening. Yes. The engagement letter will be prepared and signed when by the chairman. Well, I'll for the eighteen nineteen. Yeah, I have to contact Bill and see when he would be able to come in and sign it. So it would be available Something immediately. Soon. I mean, right. really, yes. we're we're yeah. we're approving this tonight, and then you'll go to the auditors and say, we would like to engage your services for the, this coming fiscal year. Mm -hmm. So it's like immediate. Yes. Okay. So does that engagement letter detail the points that Anna's looking for? How much we're paying? What the terms are? when the pre-audit will start, like all the terms of yeah, the agreement? It talks about that, yes. Yeah, so it's quite a yeah. few pages. Okay. So then it gets signed and you could, you could, Bill could share the engagement right. letter with Which us I next think is time. good. Yeah. yeah, so is it something you want um, us to send out in your packets or is it um, an okay thing to just put it in your green folder so that doesn't you have it? It doesn't me. matter, whatever's easy. I mean, yeah, at oh, that I'm just point, thinking of as a the reference. The more paper we put in those envelopes, the more it costs us yeah, to Yeah, so the green folder is a fine way to, okay. yeah, it's an after the fact thing and Bill will sign and read and, and you'll be happy with any uh, amendments that you might have to that engagement letter too, right. reflective of some of the things we've said and things that you're, that you would like to see that improved yeah, upon. Yeah, for the most part, I mean, there, it's pretty, um, a lot of it I think is boilerplate and then they just fill mm -hmm. in the different specifics of, um, of each community. Like they identify all the different funds that we have and, the, you know, the different, um, grants that we received that are part of the um, federal and state audit that that you had. Right. Yeah. Okay. All right. Anything else? Are we in a position for a motion? Sounds like it. Yeah. yeah. So um, we have nothing written, but no, we'll but we have to wing. <laughs> we just, the, 
make a motion to appoint the auditor for June 30th, 2018 audit. Yeah, so, so RSM. 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 Do I have a second? I'll second. Discussion? All those in favor, please yep. signify by saying aye. 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 <laughs> Opposed? <laughs> Abstain? Yep. Thanks. Okay. Our next item uh, is old business. First item is discussion of Board of Finance action item list. And I would like to respond to Ann's request to add to the open items list the discussion of our um, appropriation for the acquisition projects and the technology. I'd just like to add the item to the list so we can talk about the timing of that next year. And uh, I think a reasonable due date for that, I don't know, what do we think? Mm. September? Our meetings are sometimes thin in the summer. It's not urgent right now, mm -hmm. but we agree it's something that deserves our attention and we want to talk about. So mm -hmm. I'd like to have a date on there of September, please. I'm sorry, so a, a date of September on the action list to discuss that? The timing of the appropriation, whether it should be in, we do it, the way we do it right now is we do it in the right, prior year. Right, right. There was discussion, and I heard okay. concern mm -hmm. among the board yeah. that we want to look at the timing of that. We so don't want to. just want to put it on the list to discuss how we're going to handle it for next year. Correct. Mm -hmm. Okay, gotcha. And in September, we'll move up into your new business, so it will be on your agenda, so the public will know you're discussing it. Perfect. And so all these items, when you put dates on it, will move up into your agenda. Great, great. Thank you for that. I had forgotten that. That's how, good. That's how that will all work. Oh, good. So. That sounds great. Good. So, so the list that was in your um, packets had nine items on it. Um, and item number six, um, Lisa had come in my office to go over the items on the agenda, and we discussed the action item list. And so. Um, she suggested that I get a clarification on what is deliverable for that. What? I'm trying to find oh, that. So that is study other town wages and benefits. Mm -hmm. And what I recall on that is that's something that came up when Beth was here. And the intent, please, you guys weren't on the board then, but the intent was that we were asking for a little benchmarking in other towns in terms of what their department had to get paid, what their scale of wage increase is, and how we could compare that to our town. That's what I recall mm -hmm. that being. Does anybody yes. have a comment on that? Because we want to be specific so Anna knows right. what we're looking for from her. So I recall that we got some of that information on a worksheet, and I'm not sure how many months ago that was. So what that information was on the worksheet was really identifying, I think, um, number of vacation days and Benefit package. A, a benefits package in general. Mm -hmm. um, it did not drill down into um, what you know the um, employees in the other towns were actually getting paid for a salary and what their scale was. So those are the two. Uh, so if, so if that's what you're looking for, um, I did note on here July, but it's not realistic for me no. to really get that done for July. So. Um, perhaps we can agree on September for that. And I'm understanding that what you're looking for is for the non-affiliated group, all the positions, what they're actually paid in other towns, and if there's a scale, what that scale is. And any additional benefit package information that you think would be relevant? I thought that was already on that sheet. I, I don't remember. Yeah, it just so. warrants some updating mm -hmm. with the, the complete information so September I think the intent of that too was also to clearly define what the salary ranges were for the non-affiliated people so that we would know if the proposed increase in the budget exceeded that salary range that was something that we were very interested in at the time. So at one of your budget meetings, we did provide you with that for our, our group of employees. So, mm -hmm. okay, so just, yeah. But it, you must already have that. I, I just yeah, can't lay my hands on it. So. so I'd like to just review it all as a comprehensive package. I think it would just be a great tool come budget season. Mm -hmm. So September should kind of work good for that because it's pretty. Okay. Pretty so 
I know it's getting late, but I have a really silly question. So this list right here, is this Old Business A Discussion Board of Finance action list? That's my understanding. Because mm -hmm. I was expecting somewhere on this agenda to talk about the seven actionable items that the auditors referred to. Um, yeah, and that... Um, where, where is that? That's eight, um, right? That's number eight on this. And yeah, so, eight. so so within that eight, there's, a, there's seven points that we really need to detail out and get right. updates on regularly. So July, I, my suggestion for that is July, October, and March. So quarterly like every three months because any like I you know I just apologize I just didn't have the time to craft it out right you know in detail for Let's you see. for this meeting okay. so it's like okay so let's deal at least with we don't lose it that's quarterly. yeah, yeah so that's fine we can agree that July October and March would work for that yeah or July October so. can we touch on that a little bit tonight though uh, you want to review the specifics what do you well, it's just that I heard loud and clear from the auditors that segregation of duty was an issue with the town. I also heard Scott, Scott talk about the, yes, segre segregation of duty. No, what, what is it? What is that? Well, that means from an auditor's standpoint, ensuring that the same hand doesn't touch three different processes, having a separate set of eyes look at something to make sure there's no collusion or fraud or whatever it is these are things that auditors always look for that's why they they specify that segregation of duties should be in the policy or the procedure was and that one Scott of our major corrections was that no it was not one of the major two it was one of it. the it w I just but you heard it so you, you saw the tape like mm -hmm. I did it live. I did I tried to get it all in today but that that was an issue I heard and I also heard very loud and clear that the policies and procedures should be a living document. It isn't something that you do once and put on a shelf and forget about. So as circumstances change, we should be looking at those policies on a regular basis. And and Anna, I know you're only one person, but I think that I think that maybe you should get more help in that regard. Um, and I don't know who that person is. I don't know if there's somebody on the board of finance that might be willing to assist you if they had some time um, but I I do take that very seriously and I you know I don't know if it's mark that can review some policies and come up with some ideas well first of all like to that point um, when when the um, they come out to begin the uh, field work to do the preliminary work in, ju in July well in July I can um, you know talk to the you know, the manager that'll be out kind of get more feedback on that in terms of, um, you know, working working that out. Okay. Um, and then the segregation of duties. I didn't understand Scott to say we didn't have segregation of duties because we do have segregation of duties here. But so was so, so maybe what he was just he was just making that statement that that's like. That, that's defined in your policies. Like for example, um, um, we have an employee that does, that balances all of our bank statements. Well that employee does not, um, cannot do journal entries and any cash receipts entries. So you know, that's like a form of segregation of duties. Um, mm -hmm. And then for example, several years back, um, like in the water and sewer department, you know, they're limited, they have um, one admin person for water, one admin person for sewer, and they were like, you know, doing the bills, taking in the cash receipts, um, uh, paying the bills, issuing the checks. So one of the things, you know, as a result of that, in order to develop a form of segregation of duties, is we, we actually issue the water and sewer checks upstairs now, like mm -hmm. the account payable mm -hmm. employee staff. So I, I don't know if there was something that he saw that triggered that thought, but that would warrant a follow-up mm -hmm. question. Scott, what did you see that you were concerned, or Lauren, mm -hmm. I know you said you had a follow-up conversation with Lauren about what can you do to make sure that this doesn't appear on the audit finding next year? Yeah. Did she didn't mention segregation? No, so a follow-up question. It's not in our audit finding, so it's what yeah. the same. No, 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 that, 
that specific thing wasn't written or documented. It was an example yeah. of <laughs> the policy and procedure finding of how that can be fortified to be uh, more concrete. You know, to that it was the example. I can find the spot in the presentation, or you could just call them and ask them. Um, what what was the result of the conversation that you had with Lauren? What did she say when you asked her, what can we do? What are you thinking of in terms of what we should be doing in order not to have us written up for this next year? So what she's going to do when she comes out um, in, July. in July, she's going to look at the policies that I have in place. Okay. And two in particular that she would like to see is one for a pension fund and then one for <coughs> capital assets. So those, like, I already plan to, um, you know, work on. But I have to see what she says for, for everything else. And, um, you know, it, it may be too over-encompassing for me to be able to get it accomplished between now and October when they come <coughs> back, um, you know, to do the, the final work. But mm -hmm. we'll see what she has to say when she looks at what we already have in place. Okay. I mean that's real, you know. I mean, at this point, that's the you know the best the best that I can do. Okay. Thanks. So the rest of these items on here are not intended to be discussed tonight, but um, they will be. This list will be maintained, and as Mark pointed out, when they come up for their agenda date, they will be included on the agenda so the public can be prepared should they wish to participate in that discussion. So we just added another item to the list, which was discussing the uh, the appropriation dates mm -hmm. for, for acquisitions. And then there's like a sub list, I guess you would say, for item eight. Yeah, I, I would like to see those seven points that they mentioned yeah, and actually listed <coughs> under eight. I, when I looked at July, October, and March, I'm thinking that's really doesn't look right to me. So really what it should say is, July, October, January, and April, because that's really quarterly. I, I kind of okay. mix. I don't know. <laughs> I'm fine with that. So could we have a list of what those audit recommendations are next month? What the, the detail behind item eight? Yes. Okay. Super. Thanks. Does anybody have any other comments on this list? Um, number one, the Board of Education permanent maintenance account. I don't see a date for that well I, so I'm meeting I'm on a subcommittee I guess I just found out uh, the first meeting is in the 20th so let me go to that meeting and I'll be a little better prepared to yeah, see what, what we're doing with that okay. I, I don't have anything to offer you right now okay. um, so that's that and what is three uh, the subcommittee negotiations what is that in reference to it says volunteers Right. So, Mark, wasn't that for some of the negotiations that you do and you were asking for the board to volunteer and participate in that? Mm -hmm. Okay. Let's leave it on the list, but I don't know that we have any meat on the bones yet for that. Yeah, ongoing negotiations currently. Yep. Um, I, you know, we're kind of halfway through some of them. Mm -hmm. One of them we're cleaning up and finishing uh, this week. Uh, so we have two more outstanding, two big ones. Um, yeah, it should be consistency. It should be someone who can show up to every one of them so you can see the development of it and report back. But I don't know. Maybe it should be one of you, too, because um, you're most critical of how some of these contracts are coming back to, you know, the wages and the health mm -hmm. and the benefits and how does this all work. And maybe you'd be able to see the inner workings of how it all works. Great. Um, we'll have to figure that out. But in the meantime, I don't want to okay. lose the item. Thanks. <coughs> okay, so if there's no other further discussion on action item list, our next item is purchasing policy. And I, I don't know if everybody's had a chance to review that. Okay. I, can, can I just make one comment with regard to the purchase orders not being cut until after the invoices being <coughs> received? Yeah. Because I did have a suggestion that I wanted to put forward for that. If we have a policy that is not being followed, and Anna is getting frustrated about that because people don't seem to listen very well, then, then one, I think we need to make sure that whoever these department heads are, 
that are uh, that are not following the policy needs to be documented and that needs to <coughs> become part of a performance review so what I heard last week or last May 30th no we can't hold the payments to the vendors you know but we can make people accountable for not following policy and that's what I would like to start to see happen in the meantime I don't know that we need to parade all of these department heads here I would be willing to speak with them individually to determine why the policy isn't being followed so if I could have a list of names I'd be happy to make contact so here's what it, it was interesting because um, when I did speak with Lauren about the accounting the procedures manual she was like she goes oh my god she felt bad about that comment but she said just about every one of their engagements gets that comment and one thing that she suggested and it's more or less to, to your point is um, what one town did is every time they had um, invoices that were dated after the purchase orders a list was made like every week when the bills were in and so then at the end of the year like okay you found who the real offenders were and so rather than just listing in the audit that um, you know purchase invoices or you know purchase orders are dated after the invoice date the departments were listed in in the in, in the report, you know, in the in, um, in the comments. So it would be like, but if there's no repercussion, no no offense, but big deal. Yeah, well, it isn't. <laughs> it, it isn't because if it we're the only ones that really care about it, you know, and there's no follow up for well, then you have the list. It's been made, you know, and, and public. We have more teeth for enforcement as well, and it seemed to have worked for that particular town because the departments then received the message you know for being you know it would, they were do we have to wait that long can I have a conversation with these individuals and and try to understand their process and maybe there's a legitimate reason why it's happening when you got your report last week you were dealing with very old information too don't forget when was the last audit when was the time that Scott Bassett was here prior to last week was it a year ago July of last year so we got the orders July but of course now we're looking at old an old year so are you, you saying know? there's a market it's already cleaned up so it's a market improvement yes okay but we got our marching orders in July and dropped the hammer then but now he's auditing the mm -hmm. July mm -hmm. prior so we're, we're talking about a year and a half old information when we sit here and talk to Scott so if we make yeah, when we made the improvement a year ago, we're still getting the repercussions now. We've we've gone through great, um, um, a great effort in communicating the importance of adhering to this. So Has there been lapses? Yes. Okay. But we're cleaning it up, and we're identifying the problems. Some of them have retired. Oh, that helps. Also, if I could say the the purchasing policy, if it, it is eventually adopted, <coughs> excuse me does address the issue of you know having the purchase order in place Correct. payment comes second and it we did it a couple of times in there mm -hmm. so and of course there are you know waivers there are exceptions there's emergencies there's things where you know you have to have built into a proper purchasing policy but long story short I think that's gonna also help once you have that and you're educating your department heads and this is the written policy now that's reflective of the way we are the way we do purchasing within the we have been doing it and the way we would like to continue to do it and with all your input et cetera, et cetera. so they kind of own it at that point you know so I think that's I think that's going to help you know okay thank you Ann Camille so did everybody get a chance to review our purchasing policy all right so <laughs> I did. What I, so given that Bill isn't here and Bill worked on the subcommittee, I wonder mm -hmm. if it wouldn't be appropriate for us to email him our comments. Yeah, I mean. Yeah. And Anne, you worked on it too. Anne, let me yeah. acknowledge your effort on that. Thank yeah. you. Yeah, you're welcome. Um, sure, I mean, I think that a way to go about this is once you've read through it and digested it a little bit, you can email Bill. You can also email me because, mm -hmm. you know, that this last go round, um, yeah. Where is it? Right here. This one. Um, yeah, this one, you know, for sure, um, 
I think is pretty much I would say the way the committee would like to see it um, you know like 95 percent and that last five percent is final you know thoughts uh, department head input who was on the committee again um, so it was um, Bill and myself and Pete DeRosa came for a period of time still was in our email loop mm -hmm. so he did do a final reading which was great and Mark, for that Salerno. Kind of um, Mark Salerno and Dan Cunningham okay so, so yeah I just want to publicly acknowledge them for all their work that yes, they did on this because nice. I personally good. think this is a, um, it's a great document I mean oh, it's it, it really has moved us <laughs> really <laughs> forward well, well written I, I really think thanks. it is I, I acknowledge everybody's effort on that and um, I'm grateful for all your work well thanks it was good I mean it you know when I came to the process they had gotten a lot of topics in there but um, what happens is, you know, you pull from the eight, nine, ten other policies, right. and it becomes a little bit of a morass. So, I was kind of um, put in charge of, um, you know, try to edit, clean up once we got what we wanted yeah. to say in there. So, but that's kind of what we're all looking at, at this point. And uh, so, I think, uh, yeah, I think it's, uh, you know, from where I saw it, you know, when we started, and it's kind yeah. of meanderings to where it is now yeah, yeah I think no it's, it's great better. and Karen I hope you could be able to acknowledge those people in the minutes yeah thank you for that so just because I think the mechanics of compiling our comments would be easier if we did it in a written email yeah it's just easier. and Bill isn't here either yeah. and Jason what I would like to do is if the board's in agreement is to either scan your comments because sometimes that's easier if you already wrote them up you know it might be the easier thing to do or However you feel yeah, it would be the easiest correct. to communicate them, we could yeah. send them to Ann and Bill. Yeah. And then I would like to have another review of our comments. And mm -hmm. is that, I guess what I'm saying is I don't want to ramrod this through without having all of our comments compended in one, if you will, final draft. And then the, the Board of Finance gets to take a look at that. Yeah. I mean, the way we've been doing it, too, um, even within the committee, I know because it gets all kind of, it gets convoluted is um, it when we have an addition then someone will just say you know do this or do that you know uh, or what do you suggestions so to speak so um, you could do them you could still do them individually but then email everyone in the loop because it you know it, it that would be so everyone will see it in other words so if Camille had you know a suggestion she could send it to Bill and then he could then send it out to everyone or, or just that, you know do it that way I'm not sure I have a lot of suggestions I just had some questions that might trigger a suggestion oh, or okay. it may just fall flat and yeah it's that's perfectly fine. fine questions are fine I mean questions yeah. are fine too but if I could yeah. give you one piece of information yeah, to think sure. about between okay. now and then is you know in a purchasing policy it talks a lot about like approval levels right. is there an existing approval uh, of what, what do you call it an approval authority yes. grid so, okay. that can be attached to this so for example how much does the director of public works have in terms of spending authority like it, it right. this seemed pretty low 2500 anything over $2,500 right. has to be approved by mark right right uh, I see what you're saying. It used okay. to be fifty thousand. Yeah, yeah. We, <laughs> so I mean, we have we've done a little research since then. Okay, yeah, it's a little bit too high. <laughs> yeah, um, yeah. I mean, that can be put in under the responsibility section. That's a possibility. You know, that's a possibility. Or just a, just an attachment to the document that says yeah, that would our make current things clear. approval. Here's the positions we mm -hmm. have in town. Here's their spending limit on mm -hmm. the credit card if they take it out, and here's what they're able to approve on a purchase. Here's their limit on a purchase order that they could. Yeah, the purchase order Without limits are pretty second. clear. I think the there's a couple. Um, all purchase orders are ultimately approved at the um, selectman level. Okay, so they start as purchase mm -hmm. um, purchase requisitions, and so the departments enter their purchase requisition. Then they come to the finance department, and they're reviewed for um, to make sure that. There's enough funding in the budget mm -hmm. in yep. the line. Item. I read all that. And to make yep. sure they're using the correct, um, and to make sure they're using the, the proper account, because sometimes, um, for whatever reasons, th they don't use the correct account. So mm -hmm. we can stop it then and, and get that correction made. So um, 
Um, I have one of my staff members that it's, you know, her responsibility. She checks every purchase order to make sure <coughs> there's sufficient funding in the budget account. And um, then she forwards me an email that they're ready for me to go in and review them. I go in, um, I give them a review, and then I approve it from open to, like, step two. And then they go to the selectman's office, and they're approved from um, step two to three, and the POs are created. So it's not like like a, a department head just can't like have a, yeah. like say a twenty thousand dollar authority mm -hmm. and yeah. go through the process of creating their own purchase. Yeah, order. that's not mm -hmm. that's not so within that the purview works. of this okay. purchasing yeah. policy. It actually works against that definitely that that problem. Yeah. So um, that's kind of how our you know our process is. Right. And there's and the use of the card <coughs> is extremely limited. There's you know in terms of circumstances in which you can use a card and then be refunded or use your own card or something like that so and yet so the credit card in order to use it they have to come and you know they have to come and get it and bring it back and yeah yeah so. yeah and it is for emergencies that's true that's one one possibility or some online purchases that kind of require that transaction that's which gets it gets yeah. difficult the thing about this I thought w w you know it's not, it, it, and eventually you may need to amend and change and add depending on what's working or not working, mm -hmm. uh, you know. Um, true with any policy. It's true with any of these policies, as, as you, you were mentioning earlier. Um, so, uh, but I think it, it definitely lays the, it touches on all the important topics that you've all identified, I think. So that's good, you know, and then we, we change as we need to, you know. But um, yeah, but I think uh, a system of uh, for reviewing it, you know, just just give your comments, feed them to Bill or to me, because then our committee is going to meet again, and we're trying to do that. I think before that, maybe their next board of selectmen meeting. Well, know. that's next week. That's next week. So yeah, after I mean we, after that. Yeah, after we're not going to be ready yeah. for that. Okay, so that's correct. So it'd be the following one, yeah. hopefully. And one little editorial is. But see, excuse, but sure. so the next, so that would be August. But see, in August, the board of selectmen only has one meeting. Okay. And I think their meeting is the second week of the month, and ours is the third. Week. <laughs> okay. Why is ours the third? Because we're always we normally, the second. Well, because the first week of the month is Fourth um, of July. You're talking July. Yeah, you said August. You said, you said August. August. <laughs> no, that's okay. okay. That's okay. All right. Okay. That's All right. okay. All right. But we, yeah. what, I guess with respect to commentary, we don't have to act like as a board per comment. I mean, you can just say, you know what, you really got to move this to here or you got to do this. And then, yeah, you I just know, want to make sure we have sufficient time to right. re uh, And I think you will if yeah. that's, if we're so looking at not next BOS meeting, but the following one mm -hmm. but for them to we're try to. So we're to document our comments or our questions and then just give them to the four people that are on the board or I would say with to a CC to the other um, BOS you could, members? You could, yeah, you could, I think direct them to Bill at this point and to me because I'm not, tr you know, Bill's uh, situation yeah. may warrant that I'm jumping in on this topic a little bit. And then we will circulate as necessary, you know, like to mm -hmm. circulate to the to ourselves, to amongst ourselves, so that we, if we have the same ideas, then we won't repeat ourselves or something, same corrections or right. something. That's fine. But then all those are will be digested, just like you all with department heads are doing that same process right now, and will give us those. Right. And then we'll meet one last time, and I will go into my editing cave <laughs> one last yeah. time. Okay. And one little editorial, insure, yes. should be insure through the you whole know, document. Yeah, um, that's like, it's an interesting thing. I, ha I have like a stick, sort of a stickling point on that one, but it can be spelled either way with an E or an I. Oh, so I've that's always news used to me. the, yeah, I've always used the I form. I always but thought I, I was, if, a, if it's, if I'm the odd company. duck, yeah. Do whatever works yeah, for you. I would have used D, but that. I'm not going to split hairs yeah. with you no, over it. No, that's okay. <laughs> um, so I'll forward my comments. Just one brief comment I wanted to say that yes. I mentioned it to Ann, Anna. It would be nice to have something in here about a sole source vendor when we need it. We don't have to belabor yeah. it here, but yeah. we dance around it, but we don't really spell it out. And um, It's called unique product or service. Yes, we yeah. have it there. We have it there. But and the other reason why you don't want it everywhere well, is you don't want to be selling that. <laughs> no, you don't, but you want right. to have a, but a I think clause it was, for when you yes, need it. Yes, I think it was in, it's towards the end. Yeah, where it says waivers. Right. It's on page eight. It's, it's where um, I would put it. But 
Well, we have on page seven, well, I, I have different paging because, I, oh, actually, I did do your copy, not my own anymore that I'm working with. Let me just see because I can. I, I, I'm sorry. I should just email them to you. No, but that's okay. We'll take one minute. And that one is covered at least under 7B2. Okay. That does give you, when your, your dollar amounts are getting up there and yet you really have a unique product or service. So yeah. I just personally I like the words sole source provider. I think that is what the industry uses, at least from my experience. But yeah. that's all right. Okay, sure. Well, we'll we'll put that in the pot. Well, um, as, as long as we're on the one more thing segment. Yeah. I didn't I didn't see anything in here about local vendors. I was going to say that next. Okay, so um, I can. The short answer on that was. Uh, I had it in, then we had it out, and then we had more discussion, and we spoke with Anna, and um, I guess Anna could probably speak to that a little bit more than I can, um, because um, it seemed to be, in the end, somewhat almost restrictive. So I'm not sure if you agree with that, but... Um, well, you know, in, um, you know, discussion with, you know, some of the department heads, it